like to talk about two projects uh, out of many more that uh, recently we've been working on uh, in, in our group. And one will cover uh, CFD analysis of hydroplaning risk, and the other one will uh, talk about uh, great efficiency, great hydraulic efficiency. So my first slide is a short introduction to both of these um, studies. First one talks about hydroplaning. So the major thing that we are um, concerned about in this study is the water film thickness that um, forms on a roadway. And we are talking here about two, four, six lane highways uh, with different cross-sectional slopes, longitudinal slopes, um, at different uh, rainfall intensities. There are, of course, many other factors that influence the risk of hydroplaning, um, which are mostly connected to, to the tires. But we are not talking about this uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, research. We will be interested, though, in, like I said, the film thickness, also the spread of the uh, film thickness on the road, we, at which point are we getting to a thickness that, uh, of water film that could cause hydroplaning at certain um, vehicle speeds? And uh, also we are looking at the part of the roadway with, where, we can, where we see pooling of water. In the, uh, uh, in the second part of my presentation, I will talk about the um, hydraulic efficiency of, it, of a grade. Uh, it's a CB22 catch basin with an inlet uh, grate, uh, which was designed by South Carolina Department of Transportation Engineers. And it is a new design, so there was a, a requirement for testing of efficiency of this grate. And so we, we are still working on this. Uh, this study will uh, result in efficiency curves for the kit basin um, with drainage area curves. We will be also uh, providing uh, spreads for all of those um, different conditions that we tested. So let's start start with hydroplaning. Um, on this slide, I just wanted to show you um, a reference the value of the water film thickness that we will be comparing our uh, results with or against. So, for example, um, on the right side, you have a plot of hydraulic, of sorry, hydroplaning um, speed versus uh, water film thickness, and we used here Texas DOT equations and combined it with uh, Patron uh, equations. Just wanted to um, see what kind of a number is uh, we're looking at. So for example, for uh, the vehicle speed of 50 miles per hour, we are getting about two millimeters um, of water film that could uh, pose a risk of hydroplaning. A few words about our CFD model. So we are talking uh, about 3D CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics uh, simulations. In each of those simulations, and if I'm talking about this uh, uh, part of the study and the, the second one as well, we have in our models um, water and air. So we are uh, finding the pre-surface uh, of the flow. And we are looking into three different geometries of the road in this case. So we have a road without any curves. We have a road with a curve, but no drainage. And the third one is with a curve and um, an inlet grade. We are um, doing the test matrix with different longitudinal slopes, so with different cross slopes. We also have a set of rainfall rates that we are testing.
through the water film and through the water thickness that's uh, that's much um, higher than uh, or bigger than a few millimeters. So um, on the left side, you will see a comparison uh, of those thicknesses for a case uh, with and without curves and without any longitudinal slope. And a zoomed in, now I wonder which one. Yeah, I, so um, this is a more general view that you can, where you can see the flow spread, the pooling areas, which is uh, different for different cross-sectional slopes. You can see 1%, 2%, 4% of uh, cross-sectional slope with and without curves. So the C means with a curve and C without curve. If we would like to look more closely into this area, um, we would look here at this plot where you can see um, what is the, uh, the film thickness uh, closer, to, uh, closer to the medium. So maybe that's how I should start. This is, of course, the, uh, the highest point, could be median in the road, and this is the, the lowest point. So you can see that, for example, here I plotted the um, two millimeter thickness. Uh, we are reaching this, uh, this thickness for uh, the 1% uh, close cross slope with curve or without curve uh, quite fast. Um, that's 12 feet, 12 feet. This distance we took as a uh, one lane width. So we're looking at a four lane um, roadway here and we basically have more than two millimeters for this particular case on almost three, um, three of the lanes, three out of four. What we also did here was to check how the flow spread compares to the cross slope. And, uh, and we found out that the um, best fit is, is a linear, uh, linear fit. On the right side, uh, in, in the bottom corner, you can see that there, we also did a short comparison with different um, rainfall intensities, where you can see that for increasing rainfall intens intensity, of course, we will get higher uh, film thickness. And again, for the highest um, rainfall intensity, 10 inches per hour here, we are reaching that 2 millimeter uh, thickness. Um, so now uh, a few images of um, the water from thickness on, um, on highways with curves. Here you can see that there is much more, um, that there is uh, pulling involved. That So on the, right, uh, on the right side, you can see the top view of our models with um, different flow rates, uh, sorry, different uh, rainfall intensities. And you can notice that the flow differs slightly. So we will have a bigger spread of the film thickness. We, have, we will have a bigger spread of the uh, pooling area. Also, you can see that the waves are forming on the on our uh, roadway. Oh, now it's running. Okay, a case with longitudinal slope, we will have here um, much more uh, standing waves, uh, as you can see, without curve is on the um, on the top, with curve um, and other geometrical uh, conditions exactly the same uh, on the bottom. And you can see that the flow depth in the part where there is no pulling is quite similar in both cases. You can see it also on the plot, which is a cross section through uh, through the water surface, uh, but then of course we will get some pulling um, in 
the uh, lowest part of the <coughs> in the lowest part of the row. Again, um, two comparisons. Uh, I mean, two cases that we compare. Uh, in this case, we have a, two per a comparison between a two percent. Um, cross slope, sorry, longitudinal slope and 4% longitudinal slope. And so you can see that on the top, the water uh, surface is more uniform. On the bottom, you will see more of a standing wave formation. What we're also looking into in this project is if it's possible and how to, well, it is possible, now we know that, but um, could we use, um, different road surfaces in our project, meaning permeable surfaces, how to model it in a way that we get um, very detailed results. So in this case, um, it's a, what you're looking at is a top view and a cross section through um, a permeable surface. Every grain uh, which constitutes the uh, layer is uh, part of the geometry of the CFD domain. So the flow can go above the uh, grains, in between them. It can go down and then come back to the surface. And of course, there are other um, simpler ways of modeling forest media, but we decided to take a look into something more detailed. So in short, a short conclusion, uh, we performed a parametric matrix uh, of different test cases uh, where we were checking what was the uh, water film thickness and the spread um, on a roadway under different geometric and hydraulic conditions. Um, thanks to the use of the CFD um, modeling, or kind of three-dimensional modeling, uh, we were able to capture more details of the flow which would be impossible if we use simpler um, solutions. <laughs> and so maybe one of the, one of the um, <coughs> conclusions that's quite important for, for all of us is that we found out that the water from thickness on um, wider roads, which are um, three to four lanes, uh, which is the critical value, value for hydroplane um, so we should, um, we should remember that when we drive. And maybe because, yes, we are definitely uh, out of time, I will go to the hydraulic efficiency of the grade. So the CD25, like I said, it's a, it's a new design, so uh, we had to come up with a way to, to test it, and instead of um, doing experimental results, um, we were asked to do some CFD modeling. And we came up with a test matrix in a way that we took a, a set of flow spread values that we wanted to test uh, up to the maximum that was um, set up for us. We calculated the flow rate from HEC22 um, for these cases. Uh, then from this, we've got the velocity. Uh, which we used as an inlet um, velocity boundary condition in our uh, simulations. And as, as a result, uh, we were supposed to get the efficiency of the grade, but also the front flow, uh, side flow, if there is any back flow as well, by the flow, what are those ratios? So again, in this case, we have air and water in our domain, and as you can see on the bottom, um, our simulation consisted of a set of um, tests of uh, this kind. And base, so the water is flowing into the domain from the left, going to the right. Some of it is flowing into the grate. Other, the, everything else in, is bypassing it. And the geometry of the road was basically this part of a typical cross section of a six lane uh, divided freeway. And as you can see, we can get quite a detailed image of the flow around the grade, which I will be also showing on the next slide. So, um, 3D CFD 
allows us to notice different types of uh, flow patterns around the grade. So for example, we are talking about a 100% efficiency and where when this flow spread is um, less than the width of the grade, we are talking about some flow bypassing um, the grade. There is some um, side flow here, a small percentage. Some of the flow is, by, is bypassing the, uh, the grade. And then for the extreme cases, we have an overflowing, um, overtopping flow. CFD allows us to look, like I mentioned, in, in, on many details of the flow. So for example, here the blue surface is the uh, water surface. And what you're seeing here are three surfaces that we created, defined in the model, to capture what is the flow. The red is the volume fraction of water, so basically the, the water part in, um, on this surface. Uh, so we can capture the front flow, we can capture the amount of the side flow, if there is any uh, back flow, the same. On this one, I wanted to show an interesting thing. Um, I, so the lines that you're looking at are streamlines, the velocity streamlines, and they were colored green and uh, purple. The green ones start at the shoulder, and the purple ones start on the roadway. And you can see that most of the flow from the shoulder goes into the grade, only part of it is bypassing it. And the, the flow that started on the roadway, only in a very small um, portion goes into the grade. Most of it is bypassing the, the grade. Um, on the bottom here, again, you can see the streamlines, this time just colored with uh, velocity magnitude. And like I said, for every single case that we considered, we um, established, calculated the hydraulic efficiency uh, of the grade. Um, we will produce, um, like I mentioned, efficiency curves uh, versus longitudinal slope versus the spread and other variables, um, whatever will be needed. What we also looked at was uh, a correlation between the efficiency, the grade efficiency, and upstream Reynolds number and fruit number. And what we found is that there is a pretty good correlation. It's, um, I put a linear fit here uh, in, in this point cloud uh, between the, the total efficient, basically efficiency of the grade uh, versus the upstream fruit number. And we also have a pretty good correlation between the side flow uh, portion of uh, the inflowing um, uh, water to the grade and the upstream fruit number. And in conclusion, um, we analyzed the hydraulic uh, efficiency of the of the inlet grade, and CFD allowed us to run a, a quite a large parametric set of uh, of cases, um, which uh, I think it will be still less time consuming and. Um, more cost effective than um, experiments. I'm not saying that ex don't do experiments, no. We still need experimental uh, experimentalists and the results to validate our models. Um, but we, are, we can get those, um, those results quite fast. Um, and thanks to CFD modeling, we can uh, look into the detail of the flow again. And in this case, uh, the efficiency of the grade, we found that it correlates well with uh, the Reynolds number and truth number. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, first of all, uh, impressive study. Like, thanks for the presentation. Uh, second, did you use any experiments to calibrate your model, the CFD model? In this case, there was no experiments performed. So. Mm. No. Was it like um, like a common application of CFD? Like you know, like you are sure, like like do we need further verification in the future? Maybe so we have standard CFD models that we can reliably use in the future. I think that in this case, uh, it is a standard. Um, 
use of the CFD software. Uh, we did this kind of a study before uh, for um, Minnesota DOT with 88 rates. And yeah, I think it will be, it, it will be done in the future. There will be more studies like that. Like, uh, maybe a suggestion is uh, the sure. literature is like rich in data for great inlets, so many experiments. So if we can test it against a previous study, sometimes that would be great. We can see sure. like, I guess that, that would be, uh, thank you. Randall Mungo at SCDOT, working with Marta. Um, in the future, we do have a curb inlet that we had tested at a university in the upstate of South Carolina. I'm not going to say their name because I didn't graduate from there, but um, <laughs> it was a physical model, and we're going to move forward with the CFD model to compare those and see how they look in the you know, comparison of those. Um, it was really cool, the waves on the uh, thing. Are those capillary waves that are, that are coming down, or, or are those a very small gravity wave? Um, let me show you. You can see the difference in, in the depth. So for example, in this one, like, will it run? Maybe not, but you can still see that it's, it, it's probably one millimeter of amplitude, maybe two millimeters in there. So they're, they're, they're capillary size is, is, is really. Yeah, they yeah. are pretty small. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we know that uh, the, the hydraulic planning it's okay when the, there is uh, surface water on the, on the road. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, reduce that planning, uh, hydro planning risk? Oh, so um, that's a very good question. We didn't work on it yet. Right now we were just um, uh, assigned a task to uh, check what, the, what those thicknesses are and what is the uh, spread on the roadway. Yeah, so I this is still something yeah, that I see that you mentioned. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, the cup and the draining. Uh, uh, I'm talking about draining. When you are talking about draining, that means uh, you have to catch base or inlet on the uh, right, like a distance from a uh, upper stream and a lower stream. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, distance between one inlet to another inlet? That distance is uh, to say is uh, what I say because if if there is only one inlet on the downstream mm -hmm. and then that the the, the runoff water uh, he can handle he can handle that the catch base he can handle that that volume of of, uh, of water right that means if you put some uh, more catch base or more inlet I think that for that way you can reduce the hydro planning. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there is uh, the distance, critical distance, um, or um, minimal distance that uh, you're talking about. But in this case, we didn't look into this. We wanted yeah. to see what, will be, uh, what kind of flow pattern we will get when we put any kind of um, yeah. opening in yeah. the road. Uh, and we didn't differ the, the size of this opening. We didn't, diff we didn't put any... Um, real catch basin, it's basically right now just an opening in the roadway. Uh, what type of suggestions uh, on oh. the future? You can uh, try. Steve, yeah. who works with me, would like to add something.
this one is this one is with. Yeah, uh, what I'm talking about on the future, if uh, you can see the elevation of the of the uh, the one catch base and another one to see what the maximum elevation of that catch base on the upstream mm -hmm. and the lower stream, and then you can see what that hydro planning between that catch base. That at least you can put in your suggestions. Okay. The future. Thank you. Thank you. I saw a hand over there, but hold on, I've got. Maybe I didn't catch it. Did you talk? You talked about porous pavement and its impact on the water film thickness. Or so what I mentioned is that this is the next step. We started with um, a proof of concept uh, model for the moment, uh, where uh, we generated this kind of a porous permeable surface, and um, I ran a few cases just to see how it works, if it works at all. And but we will be working on this we would like to somehow incorporate permeable pavements into our uh, hydroplaning study as well. Okay, because the, the Dutch um, do this research a lot and they, they claim it does help with hydroplaning, but it must be related to the intensity of the rainfalls and the depths of the forest pavement and slopes and such. Oh, I'm sure, because like even in this case, you can see that most of the flow goes through, uh, goes in this layer, goes in between those grains instead of staying on the top of the surface. Um, this is again just an example. Uh, the porosity was pretty high in this one, um, so it wouldn't serve as a road surface. But um, I'm pretty sure that there would be some improvement if we use this kind of a surface. I think you ma mentioned uh, cross slope and longitudinal slope yes. and its effect. How much does it affect the thickness that two millimeters or uh, whatever thickness in uh, on the road surface uh, away from the curb? So there will be a difference. My slides are thing too big for this computer. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look about, for example, at this one. So you will see about a millimeter of, of a difference or less. For example, here, uh, the purple line is 1%, this blue line is 2% cross slope, and then we have 4%. For the 4%, we didn't get such a smooth surface. That's why you see these uh, basically waves a non-uniform uh, surface. For the other two, that, that was just a nice, very uniform uh, surface. So the difference between these two, it's uh, about half a millimeter, then between this one and this one is more like a millimeter and a half, or a millimeter, in, in the maximum spot, of course. And the longitudinal slope effects? With the longitudinal slope, I think that I had one plot here, this is without, if not, okay. But here we have a only comparison uh, with and without curb. Okay. You know, we have okay. many yeah. plots yeah. <laughs> created and I just had to right. choose a few, but it will okay. be, we are working on a report, technical report, it will be published. So um, huh. all of this data will be available. I hope soon. <laughs> Thanks. When Thank you very much. Thank you.